Welcome to your first geometry video. I wanted to give a little history of geometry. I don't want to take too long about it, but I think it's important to know. Um, geometry, the word comes from geo, which is anything dealing with the earth, and you see this word in geography and geology, or like that little prefix there. And metri means measure, and think of other things that have that kind of word in it, like metric, meter, metronome, they keep measure of things. A metronome, by the way, is one of those, in, when your band teacher, your choir teacher keeps the beat, that's, they have an instrument that does it, it's called a metronome. All right, so things that you might be interested about when it comes to some history of geometry. This picture here is of this guy named Euclid, and he's considered to be the father of geometry, so you can thank this entire semester to him. Um, his location, his GPS, was Greece. He lived about 300 BC, was his kind of in his life there, and this is his claim to fame. He's the father of geometry, and the reason is he wrote a book called The Elements, and actually it's a set of 13 different books, and you only have one book, um, so good thing you're not taking class right from Mr. Euclid himself, and the geometry that you're learning right now is called Euclidean geometry. There is, if you want to go on into the world of mathematics, something called non-Euclidean geometry, um, but this class, we study what he kind of taught, basically. Um, all right, so here is your, your lesson over this section 1-1. One, one. Points, lines, and planes. There's a lot of information in this video. All right, point, I've got a picture of that. I've got a picture of some lines. And over here, I have planes, but these are not the right kind of planes. But I thought that would be a nice picture to show you because it's really hard to show a plane in a picture. Um, other than this type, but that is not the geometry type. I should go back. Speaking of planes and Euclid, Euclid's geometry is sometimes called plane geometry, like when you sign up, sometimes some high schools or colleges might call it plane geometry. So this is becoming a very funny joke now that you know that. This little kid says, plane geometry is hard enough. What will fancy geometry be like? <laughs> Um, here's what Euclid did. He had these undefined terms. He said basically point, line, and plane could not be defined. And here we are going to define them. Um, and this is because they're not un undefined. This is what makes it Euclidean geometry. Otherwise, you're plain geometry. A point is a location. A line is made up of points. It technically has no thickness or width. We can't draw it that way, so we will have thickness and we will have width to our line. And a plane is a flat surface made of points that extends forever. So like the ceiling in the room is what I usually use as an example for a plane. Um, it does not go on forever, but it gives us kind of a sense of what that's like. These three things, if you make a note in your notes, I would like to show you a visual of that uh, when you come to class tomorrow. So remind me. <clears throat> Hint, hint, remind me. Um, and we use points to name the lines and planes. Uh, you know, we talk about the ceiling. I mean, you all pretty have a good idea of what a point and a line is. But the ceiling, we describe as part of the plane. Um, it says it's football season. I always I give this example, too. What is the definition of a, of a touchdown? It's when the ball crosses the plane of the end zone. If I'm... I don't know if I'm totally correct with that, but that's something like that. So you can imagine there's like a big invisible sheet of paper at the end zone, and if that ball crosses it anywhere, well, with the, it, within the hands of the football player, it's considered a touchdown. Uh, a point, of course, has no size and no shape. A line, you need a minimum of two points. Oops, I need to get that on pen. Two points. And you need a maximum, you can have an infinite number of points. Okay, two points is the minimum, infinite is the maximum. A plane, it takes three points to make a plane. 
You need three, otherwise it's not going to be a plane. And there's some stipulations on that, like the three points cannot be in a line. And once again, I'd like to show you that in class as well. So remind me when I'm showing you the plane about the three points. And then a maximum, you can have an infinite number of points in your plane to make it up. Okay? So infinite means endless amount. All right, this is where I have students that struggle a lot with this, and I want to go through this, and this is why I made this chart. So yes, if you're at home, you would run a press pause and write down this chart, okay? Things that are okay with me when you are writing down what a point is. You can write point A. You can write point A. You cannot write A. Okay, and believe it or not, if you put this on a quiz or a test, it's uh, going to be a check mark. It's going to be wrong. Okay, so I'm telling you now, we need to practice that. Be careful when I read off the answers or show you the answers. So you can do that with any point. Point C, point B. Please do not just put down a B. Do not put down just a C if you mean a point. And I might do that once in a while, too. If you see me doing that, you get to say, this is tally. You've got to put the point in front of it. You can write out the word, but obviously the dot is much faster. Line ABC. Here's a line, and this funky little thing here is like a, a cursive Q or an italic um, letter. A lot of times they have that. This is representing the entire line. Okay, so here's some options. You make a line like this to show this it goes on to infinity in either, either direction, and you put two letters underneath it. Um, when that happens, there's usually going to be a lot of marks made suddenly on my board. We'll give it a moment to catch up. Okay, what you cannot do is use three letters underneath that. There we go. So I do not want you to go A, B, C. That would be incorrect. You would miss a point on that. You can actually write out the word line, but if you're going to do that, then you have to use the one. You only have one thing that you can put behind it. And the one letter that represents that whole thing is that italic or cursive Q. Okay? B does not represent this entire line because there might B might go through some other line as well that isn't shown here, but that's why we pick the Q. All right? Um, you can have, it doesn't have to be A, B. It could be line B, A. It could be line B, C. It could be line A, C. You just cannot put underneath here something like line C. That will not work. You cannot go line, this is another favorite of students, AB. You cannot go line B and then put that little Q there. Q is not a point of the line. The line is made of points. That Q just represents that particular line. All right, a plane. You need three points that are not in the same line to make up a plane. So you can write out the word plane and then put letters behind it. However, they cannot be in the same line. So you're going to have to go A, B, D. You can go the one italic or cursive letter that represents that plane. You can write plane and then write it in cursive as well. Um, you can even do the symbol. This is like our symbol and you can do B, C, D. You cannot put, in this case, you cannot put plane A, B, C. A, B, C is a line. It's not a plane. You've got three points in a line. There are three points that are, well, in a word that we're going to learn here pretty soon, collinear. So they are not going to make up a plane. You cannot put down plane D. All right? Um, there's probably a lot of variations there, but you can use the symbol then you can use the word, either one. All right, all of these have something in common. Co-coach, co-captain, co-exist, cooperate, cohesive, coincidence, coordinate, co-pilot. Usually it means two or more people working together, generally. Something like that, two or more. So when we see this new term, co-linear, we're talking about two or more points on the same line. Two or more points on the same line are collinear. Coplanar, 
two or more points on the same plane. Collinear, linear, line, planar has the word plane in there. Co is like more than one. Actually, I'm not going to have you write this down, but I want you to look at it. Space is boundless. It's a three-dimensional set of all points, and space is where all of our lines and planes are contained. I just, I feel like I need to say it, but I don't feel like you need it in your notes. Okay, we're going to move on to the examples, and I'm going to change this to another video. So this is like a two-set video here.